Hey everyone! Welcome to Allison's Wonderland! The show that takes you down the rabbit hole into the wild and wonderful world of animation and video games. I'm excited to see you guys all here live. Thank you for joining me. Tamar, always such a pleasure to have you here. Hey Sam! Good to see your face! Barry and Hunter and Sebastian! And of course, Jeffrey, so grateful for you having being on here live. Hi, Aida. Donnie Vio, another voice actor here. Hey, Victoria. You guys, I'm so excited. Our guest today is Thurup Van Orman. Um, so hopefully he'll be joining us shortly. Um, also, I wanted to share with you guys that I have some very exciting news, and I wanted you guys to be the first to know. There are some big changes coming to Allison's Wonderland in uh, 2022, which is, hello, just six weeks away, pretty much. Wait, like eight weeks away. We're going to be doing a complete rebrand, and we're going to be the, taking the show off Instagram, and it's going to be more of a visual podcast, live streaming on YouTube and Facebook. So I can't wait to tell you guys all about that. But I just saw Thurup just join the chat. So I want to welcome him in. Uh, Mr. Gibbs says you can't wait for my VO animation class next week. That's awesome. Are you signed up? Um, for anyone that doesn't know, I am going to be teaching an animation workshop with Real Voices LA. Uh, Real Voice LA um, next Tuesday night at 5 o'clock. So um, it's open to anyone anywhere in the country because it's on Zoom. So I hope you can join us and I'll post a flyer tomorrow for anybody that wants more information. Okay, ladies and gents, put your hands together for the one and only Thurup Van Or. Hi. Oh my goodness, I have like little tiny windows in my Whoppa. studio. Hi. <laughs> awesome. How's it going? It's going so good. I'm just turning my volume up. It's amazing. I wish I could show you my tiny windows because I have the same tiny windows <laughs> in my studio. Um, these are actually gigantic uh, windows. I'm just very, I'm just huge. You're far away no, from them? No, they're, they're like, they're like a, a foot tall. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> what space are you in right now? Is that your home workshop or? Um, it's my bedroom, which is also my home workshop. <laughs> nice. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, you bet. I've been trying to make this happen for a while, so I'm so glad we were finally able to connect it. People are mm -hmm. saying, yo, it's Flapjack, Flapjack and Little Gideon, Thurup, glad to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in live. If anybody doesn't know what this is, the show is called Allison's Wonderland. It's a weekly podcast where we interview people that work in animation and video games. So happy to have you on. Um, so, uh, we can just dive right in. I, I was thinking about this. Actually, I was trying to remember, did we, uh, did I once, were you ever in a bowling league? Um, no, I've bowled like three times in my life. Okay. <laughs> I was, I felt like I'm, I've maybe met you in real life, but I can't recall when, I think it was maybe um, many years ago. Yeah. I remember exactly when, uh, it was the first comic con that I went to and you were friends with Kent Osborne, I think. And you gave me a fake million dollar bill and it was so exciting even though I knew it was fake. <laughs> it just makes you feel rich just for a second. <laughs> Do you know what? That's amazing branding even back then. <laughs> I think it was like an advertisement for a cult or something. A um, cult. Yes, of course. <laughs> Join my cult. <laughs> Three million dollar bills. Oh, that's so awesome. Oh, well, I really uh, was having a lot of fun kind of diving into your career and also um, your life story. And, um, <laughs> you know, the thing that kept popping up was, and I don't know how many of our viewers are going to know, um, you know, you've been working in animation for a long time. You created and um, developed the show, The Marvelous Misadventures of Flapjack, which mm -hmm. turns out was like sort of semi-autobiographical <laughs> based on your own life. Yeah, kind of. I mean, Flapjack was really based on me as a kid um, and my uh, overexcitement for adventure and getting myself into trouble. Um, and Knuckles uh, was kind of based on who I feared I would become and was slowly becoming. So, yeah, What about now? My did past it, and future. Did, no, it, did it come true? I, I'm better than Knuckles. I'm just an old Flapjack. <laughs> 
Um, to quote Yoda, uh, you're the, they, who says, uh, the greatest teacher is failure. I was wondering, um, <laughs> the Shell Island adventure that you had as a teenager, can you tell us a little bit about that and some of the lessons that you might have learned? Um, sure. Uh, it's been a while. Um, so when I was 13 years old, my family moved from uh, northern Florida, Panama City, Florida, um, to Salt Lake City. And um, uh, culture shock. Yeah, it was it was a lot of culture shock. And I hated it. Um, and I missed the ocean. And I read like, just adventure stories, like all, all the time. And in like all the 1800s, uh, like going to sea stories, it's like 12 years old, you're a man, you're ready to go do some things, uh, make some stuff happen. So I was like, I'm 13. <laughs> I can, <laughs> chop, um, chop, I can really, huh? Yeah, totally. Um, so I, actually I was in uh, the ripe old age of 14 when I was like, okay, I'm gonna run away. There's this little island off the coast um, of Panama City called Shell Island. Um, I'm gonna live off the land. I'm gonna build myself a little hut. Um, I'm just gonna, you know, li live off um, uh, what the island provides. I wasn't gonna bring like a knife. <laughs> I didn't bring a knife or anything. Um, and so I get there and uh, I gave all my money to a homeless person. Um, Cause I was like, I don't need money for <laughs> where I'm going. Um, uh, Wait, how, did then, you fly there? How did you get yeah, there? Yeah, so I, I, I I worked as a janitor at the high school that I wasn't old enough to go to yet um, uh, to earn enough money, uh, like after hours uh, to buy a plane ticket. And, th and I didn't really run away. I like told my parents because I needed them to help buy the ticket, but we worked out a, we worked out a thing where they were kind of okay with it. Did they um, know you were going to like uh, live on an Island or did they think you were going to no, stay with family? <laughs> they, they, um, uh, I, I told them I was going to stay with church friends, which I did for um, a minute. <laughs> uh, and then, and then I told uh, these people and, and the dad was like, yeah, do it. <laughs> you got this. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and so I did. Um, so, so I get to Shell Island and it's like, it's an ordeal. And I get all my stuff wet, which was like matches, potatoes and rice. And, um, or no, not there wasn't potatoes because I would have eaten them. It was like rice and matches. And I don't know how I thought I was going to cook them even if I could light a fire, but the matches were ruined. Um, I didn't bring water and I, um, there was, there's rattlesnakes all over the island, which I didn't know. Um, like everywhere, like all the bushes were just crawling because they didn't have any predators or anything. Um, yeah. And then, so I, I had the... <laughs> um, amazing idea to um all right if i'm in wetland i don't think snakes like water so i'll i'll build a little shelter for myself in the middle of this island there's like a little pond um so um so i built i started building this little hut with palmetto branches and it was really cute and i was really proud of myself and then right up behind me in this little lake in the middle um in the middle of the island, an alligator pops up, this giant alligator. And I had a stick in my hand and I chucked it at it and then it just went under and I was like, oh, okay, great. Now <laughs> this alligator um, that I just tried to jab in the eye is gonna try to eat me the entire time. So uh, uh, long story short, I was only there for three days, not an entire summer. I Three days. Um, was starving the entire time. I didn't have any water. I couldn't sleep because I was just imagining this alligator coming to get me and my ears were like alert and I just like wander across the dunes and like <laughs> looking around and listening. Um, wow. Uh, it, it, and, uh, and I had imagined, and I did like spear Amanda Ray, but it was like, just wow. looked like an alien. And then I felt like really bad because I couldn't eat it because it was just super gross and it made me sad. And then I was ashamed of myself that I killed an animal and didn't eat it. And <laughs> I knew you could eat sea urchins, but I couldn't make myself eat just orange guts. I've never done it before. So, so I just felt like total failure, like this big dream that I had and this big adventure just was like a, a, a total failure. 
and I ended up having to get a job for the rest of summer at the House of Beef and Seafood, and I would like eat off people's plates. Uh, when done I took them to, <laughs> I've done that to the back room. Um, and when I got back, it was like so embarrassing for me because I told everyone I was going to go on this big adventure. And then like when I told them like the long story, like people were just like, whoa, that's so cool. That's such a cool adventure. And I was just like, oh, my God, that was the adventure. That was the uh... adventure. So, so I, I mean, I think I, I didn't see it. I, I, I think like that, that, <laughs> that little adventure really changed my perspective for better or for worse. Um, yeah. for the rest of my life, like both as a storyteller and just like as a a human person. Um, because when I planned an adventure or, you know, telling a story or whatever, once things start happening that you don't expect and you don't know how, how you're going to get out of them, like that's, that's <laughs> when, that's when it gets real. That's when you're in a, um, a, a real story or a real adventure or whatever. So I try to use that in storytelling and for better or for worse, I put myself in some pretty dangerous, stupid situations because I, I, uh, I need that. I need the like, what am I going to do now? How am I going to get yeah. out of this? It keeps you like on the edge of your seat because you don't know what is going to happen. Yep. So, but now you are uh, a dad, right? Uh, <laughs> so I'm yep. just curious, like what if your kids were like, Listen, Dad, I'm going to go live in Catalina Island. I'm going to eat buffalo. <laughs> That's um, it. Spending the summer doing that. What would you say? Um, I've thought about that a lot, and <laughs> it is uh, <laughs> never going to happen. They're, they've learned enough from all my um, insane stories that they're like, I will never do any of these stupid things they do. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, not an option. Do you watch the show uh, alone? <laughs> I think um, it's yeah, on the History Channel. It. Yeah, it's so good. It's so good, right? You should see if you can get on that show. <laughs> um, I I don't want to be alone that long. <laughs> I know. They have like I the think... family versions you now, maybe. <laughs> or like, what, what if they had um, yeah, like the animator my version? Wouldn't res resent me for being on it. <laughs> <laughs> <So> I'll <laughs> draw myself suffering. <laughs> and so then were you jotting down like did you end up jotting down any of the ideas or things that happened to use as stories later at at that point were you already telling stories or was that really the catalyst for your storytelling um I think it was kind of the catalyst I did keep really good journals so I haven't gone back and re read my journals um but uh mm. I, I I I was good about it I like the next summer I went and uh half ran away half convinced my parents that I was going to go live in Mexico for the summer. So um, that's what I did. I lived in Puerto Vallarta. Um, I was trying to get <laughs> was like my big by plan that, that fit. Yeah, by myself. Um, my, my big plan that failed was um, uh, Punta de Mita. There's like a little point just south of Puerto Vallarta that I was like, it has to have the perfect waves because all of the storms from the south pacific are gonna wash up on this point and they're gonna wrap around the point and i was like looking at topographical maps it was like before the internet or anything and i was just like this is it this is where the dream waves are um and then i never made it there <laughs> yeah i kind of want to bring your parents like ask your parents what they were thinking <laughs> yeah okay honey yeah. They, they were real supportive. <laughs> and, and so it was kind of through some friends um, in Salt Lake City that you coined the name Thorough. Is that right? Um, yeah, actually. So first, first day of school, um, 1989, um, in junior high, uh, I was waiting in the principal's office uh, to go to my first class. And there were these... <laughs> there are these girls that were like the bad girls that had gotten in trouble. So they were waiting in the principal's office uh, to, uh, I don't know, be punished or whatever. And, um, and they were cute. Um, and, <laughs> and they're like, Oh my God, he looks like, um, he looks like that sailor in the movie we watched um, Captain Thorpe. Um, and, and the movie's called Seahawk. It was Errol Finn and Flynn. And he had like a skateboarder from the eighties haircut um, somehow. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and 
And then my first, my first class, one of them was in my class. So the principal was like, can you take uh, Mr. Van Orman to his class? And the teacher asked what my name was. And she's like, it's Little Thorup. Um, and, then, and I, I don't know. I loved it. I loved the, this, this name that these, perfect. Uh, these bad girls gave me. And, and Salt Lake is such like a conservative, like everyone you kind of dress the same and same haircuts and everything. And I didn't fit that. So I loved being part of like this uh the rebels yeah <laughs> alternative underground um band were you a weirdo. skateboarder or did was your hair just yeah. cut like that yeah, nice <laughs> do you still skate um i haven't for a while i keep thinking about building a half pipe i started roller skating um which i uh is so much more fun to me because like skateboard like any really good 10 year old can kick my butt at skateboarding like they can do stuff that I just can't do but on roller skates um I can do stuff that you have never seen before <laughs> really make up yeah I uh yeah it's the the terrain for like a, a daring uh acrobatic roller skater like you can do some cool stuff that no yeah no one has ever seen Dude, I want to go skating with you. I love roller skating and even took some roller skating lessons in high school. But I, I don't know if I'd say uh, daring acrobatic. I mean, I can uh, shoot the duck and uh, roller feet backwards and do some minor break dancing uh, as I have embarrassed myself uh, trying to submit to like pro skater auditions and stuff like that. That's amazing. I, my dream is to pull off a windmill on roller skates. Like, uh, I've tried oh. for so many years and I don't, I think I'm reaching that point where I don't think it's going to happen, but I don't. <laughs> Define maybe, pull maybe off. <laughs> uh, I want it to be beautiful. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm not there. I'm definitely not there, but if you want it to be really <laughs> awkward. <laughs> wow. That's so amazing. Um, so when it came to Flapjack, um, I had heard that um, Paul Rubens was originally supposed to be, a.k.a. Pee Wee Herman, Pee -wee. Um, was originally <laughs> going to be your uh, lead. And so I was just wondering if you could tell us a little bit about how you found him and uh, why it didn't work out. Um, uh, I love him. He's my favorite. Um, and I think, I think Pee Wee resonated so much and so hard, uh, for me as a kid, like being, and it, it's weird. Like, I don't think kids could even imagine now, like pre-internet, but living in a small town <laughs> and being a little weirdo and, and seeing like no one, no one else. Uh, who, uh, I, I mean, everyone just tried to fit like a certain mold so you wouldn't get beat up basically, at least in the, in the deep South. And to be like a weirdo who's like, I just don't fit in with all these people. And then seeing like someone on TV that's like really fun and funny. and like, I want to go, I want to go to Pee Wee's Playhouse. I want to hang out there every day. So I, I loved him. I just like, I, I felt like he's my best friend on TV. <laughs> And so, uh, and I met him a couple of times when I went to CalArts. He was um, around occasionally. Um, like teaching? But, or? No, he was uh, fundraising, I think. Hanging he was out? the president of the Alumni Association, Association. So, I don't know, planning adult things, <laughs> adult benefit <laughs> things. Um, but, uh, so, so he was my first choice for his voice. And I, I don't know what happened exactly. So he wasn't going to show up that day. We called, like we were waiting We called his agent and they were like, Oh, I thought he was going to come tomorrow. But I, I kind of suspect, um, my producer, Jackie Buscarino was like my best friend. And I think that she secretly down deep knew that I wanted to do the voice of flapjack. So maybe she did that on purpose. I don't know. I should ask her. <laughs> um, <laughs> Right, we've got Jackie coming on the line right now, Jackie. <laughs> um, but either way, it worked out. I mean, it was it, uh, it was a dream come true to do um, Flapjack's voice, and I think um, uh, I think it was unique and it was sincere uh, most of the time because 
it was me in my real life. Um, uh, I'm glad it worked out the way it did, although um, I never got to hang out with Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> hey, it's not too late. <laughs> you just got to have him star in your, a new show or something. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I should. But it seems like it was really kismet that you ended up voicing that role. Um, just absolutely. Could the show, I mean, I'm sure the show would have been great with him as well, but would it have been as iconic and as heartfelt? And, you know, I wonder if it would have resonated with everybody. Um, prior to doing the voiceover for that, had you done any voice acting before, like in college or anything like that? Um, I mean, for films at CalArts. So at CalArts, you make a film every year and everyone like does everything themselves. So um, I mean, that's why I love animation. It's all the stuff that I love to do all stuck together. So I love doing the voices. I love doing the art. Um, uh, so I did my my films. Um, I actually made a fl terrible, terrible flapjack film uh, while I was at CalArts. Okay. And then, <laughs> uh, but I did the voice from there. And then uh, I took acting classes and stuff at CalArts, which I loved. Got it. And so was the team and Cartoon Network like, yeah, sure, it's your show. Or did you get any pushback? I think that they were. I think they're just like, okay, whatever. <laughs> I think yeah. they gave us so little money to make that um, show that they're just like, okay, yeah, whatever you want to do. <laughs> just, just don't bother us. Because you started as an unpaid intern at Cartoon, Cartoon Network, is that right? Uh-huh. And just wow, sort of... you did your homework. Got in. <laughs> yeah, actually, I um, I couldn't get a job, so I kept, like, pushing them to start an unpaid internship just so I could um, get a foot in the door, uh, which worked. Um, worked. They did it, and I got in, and then, yeah, pretty pretty quick was able to transition in. Although, I, I think I tried to get in for voice acting before I... Actually, I think I, I was taking a bunch of storyboard tests, and then I met Colette Sunderman, yeah. Um, and she was very nice to me and, and she's like, we got to help you get a job. And I was like, oh, I do voice acting, which now in hindsight, I know everyone she knows tells her that all the time and her face yeah. just dropped and it was just like, no, like, not eh. that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Did she direct, yeah. uh, was she, who was the voice director on Flapjack? Was it Colette? Um, no, it was, um, oh man, I'm blanking on his name. Uh, first season was... Oh man. Quick, somebody Google it. <laughs> Adler? Uh, Charlie Adler. Yes. Charlie um, Adler. So he, he, he did the first season and then uh, I just did it after that season oh, two he's... and three. And... Yeah, he directs Rugrats. <laughs> he's so. Oh, cool. cool. Um, yeah, so I mean, how did it feel then when you? We're suddenly went from the unpaid intern to having your own show, and um, it was super exciting. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, yeah. I, I think in the same way that, um, in the same way though that, like, the, I don't really see failures as like a failure. It's just like part of the story. I even the successes, like, you get a show. You don't really, there's never like a moment where you're like, I did it. It's like, okay, you get to make, uh, you get to storyboard a uh, pilot. Then you get to record a pilot. Then you get to like get a pilot animated. And then you, you get like just tiny little baby steps along the way. So it, it was very exciting that a thing that I made most likely will get on the air. Um, but it, you know, there's never that moment where it's like, Nailed I it. it. Yeah. Actually, um, maybe actually, this is that moment. <laughs> maybe it is. Um, as I look out through my tiny windows, King of All I Survey. Um, uh, I, I did have a moment, though, where I was, like, completely broke from making Flapjack because they didn't give us any money to make any of the show. But especially so you're investing pilot, your own money. Is that, yeah, so yeah. so I, I animated at, at Screen Novelties, let me come use all their stuff and make the opening title sequence, which was just like, um, yeah, out of my budget, out of my t tiny amount of money that I didn't have. Um, so like even eating was hard. And then 
And then when I went to Korea to um, oversee the animation, they flew me first class. And it was like, I was like looking up like, how much does a ticket cost to fly first class? $6,000. I could have eaten like <laughs> a thousand dinners with that money. Throw that me in with so, the bags. Give me so helpful. Yeah, I felt like a hobo. I felt like uh, <laughs> Beverly Hillbilly sitting in first class, like super poor with like torn pants. You're um, like stuffing the salt in your pockets. <laughs> the little I Can I get more butter? Uh, thank uh, you. Totally. I took those little salt shakers. I was like just filling my pockets like freshly baked cookies. More please. Um, yeah, I filled, I filled all of my luggage with <laughs> free, free condiments. Oh, <laughs> and so um, did you realize that the show was a hit? Like, at what point did you realize the show was a hit? Um, right now, no, <laughs> <laughs> it's a hit. Um, <laughs> um, I don't know. It was it was very exciting to see like like the internet was just starting, so like people people were posting like fan art and stuff on on Deviant Art, yeah. um, which was so exciting and like um just to see all the really messed up draw drawings um was so cool and that's when it was just like people like the thing i made um and, and seeing like billboards and stuff like family members like distant second cousins sending themselves taking a picture in front of a, a billboard or something for a flapjack was super rad then taking a picture on their palm pilot and like <laughs> sending it yeah. to you yeah, probably just taking like on film and then scanning it and then <laughs> uploading it for two hours um, yeah. to email. Yeah. Wow. That, that was amazing. Um, so I guess, you know, I'm curious as you've built this career um, for anybody that is looking to create their own show. I mean, I, I saw a few people in the comments saying like, I want to do that, or I want to work for Cartoon Network. Do you have any, you know, do you think your path, I mean, everybody's path is so different, but do you have any advice or things that you've seen holds true, not just for you, but for other show creators? Um, I'm getting distracted by the comments. Thanks, Andrea. <laughs> um, uh, ad advice for creators. Um, I, I think I think the thing that I, I learned um, uh, a little bit on the late side um, was, you know, being brand new to having a show and being, like, pretty new to animation and wanting it to be, like, uniquely my thing. Um, I... Uh, I I think on the art side, I tended to hire people who would just like do what I said, <laughs> who are pretty new. And I think like in hindsight, I, ideally for sure, the best thing to do is hire people that are better than you at all of the things. Like find people that you like really identify with what they're doing <clears throat> and does the thing that you want it to do and just let them like push it. And I think that was the case <clears throat> uh, with the storyboard artists that I brought on like Penn Ward, who'd never worked anywhere before, and Pat McHale, and J.G. Quintel, and um, uh, Mike Roth, and John Infantino, Ken Osborne, like, a, a lot of them, it was their very first job, but I knew that what they did was amazing, and they had s stories that had never been told. I I, 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 I tr kept trying to get uh, Penn, Penn Ward, who created Adventure Time, a job, um, and no one would hire him because it was so specific what he did. Um, but mm. man, um, <clears throat> they you missed out. Yeah. <laughs> you saw it. Uh, yeah, he's amazing. All of them. I, the, the whole crew of Flapjack was just uh, incredible, incredible people. And are you still in touch with JJ and Penn and Pat and Rebecca Sugar and everybody? Yeah, I mean, everyone's busy, so kind of, but uh, I, I love them all. <laughs> and how's it been seeing their careers flourish over time? Um, amazing. It's so exciting. It's so, it's so weird to like, it feels like a second ago that um, I was the unpaid intern and now like to know all of the people who are making all the cool shows is, well, that's cool. <laughs> that's awesome. 
Um, so how did you go then from working in television, doing TV series, to your animating, animated feature film directorial debut for Angry Birds 2? Um, uh, so when I went to Cal Arts in 2000 is when I started. Um, that was my plan was to go into features. Um, <laughs> actually, the, the first day of um, orientation, uh, they had us go around. And I think it was Carlos Ramos, um, who's an amazing artist and animator. Um, he's like, all right, everyone go around and say what your name is and say uh, what you want to do. And everyone was like, I want to be an art director. I want to be a director. And he would just laugh at us. And at the end, he's just like, you know, I'm laughing. None of you guys are going to come out of Cal Arts and be a director. Like, this is, this is how it goes. If you're going to be a feature director, you, like, you work for 15 years as a storyboard artist. And then if you're lucky, they make you a head of story. And then if you're lucky and you bust your ass, then they let you direct a movie. And I was like, all of us, all of our dreams were just crumbling. <laughs> um, and I was like, I don't have 15 years in me to do storyboards. I'm not going to, I can't do it. So. Um, and then I found out, oh, a TV show, you have a quicker route to just uh, having more creative control. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so I, I, I switched my goals around real quick just because <laughs> I have so much ADD. Uh, there's no, <laughs> no way that I could hold down a stable job for 15 years. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so anyways, uh, so uh, long story, but... Uh, I don't know. Once, once Flapjack went and Adventure Time, um, I was lucky enough to be part of that um, because Penn is a delight. Um, uh, and then just, I, I mean, slowly inched my way into features. I um, I did storyboards on the Trolls movie like so First... many years ago um, mm -hmm. uh, before it was the uh, amazing Trolls movie that it became, but there was like a bunch of old um, um, there's. I'm sorry, reading the comments again. Um, there's, <laughs> there's a bunch of uh, old iterations of the movie. I think it took like 15 years to make Trolls. So I worked on a, a version of that, and one of the producers, um, Aaron Warner, um, liked me, and I liked him, so I helped him out with projects. And then uh, when Angry Birds came along, he's like, "Hey, how'd you like to direct some burbs?" So I directed some burbs. Um, uh, uh, and it was really hard. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because you're, you're going from 2D animation to then CGI. Uh, what was that like? Um, <laughs> hard. Was it challenging? Uh, I'm sorry, reading comments again, because Singing Killed My Grandma um, from Trolls movie. It's super funny. Um, <laughs> uh, so going, it, it wasn't the 2D to 3D that was hard. That That part was amazing, because... When you send things overseas at such a low budget on TV shows and it comes back, like, you're lucky if a walk looks like they're walking and not, like, swimming across the ceiling or something. <laughs> but, um, so, so to get to work with animators who are, like, the best in the world, like, our animation team um, from Sony Pictures Animation in um, Vancouver, actually, it's people from all over the world, but like each one of them could win Academy Awards with their acting. They're just unbelievable actors. And then they can also do the technical stuff and like not just make someone look like they're walking or whatever, but like so specific and add so much nuance that it, it will make you cry. Um, and it does make people cry is amazing to me. But so, so the positives are enormous going to features because you can, you have the budget and the time to really like hone things and make them um, beautiful and funny and perfect. And like, you're, you have to bring in a much bigger audience because it's like so much at stake, so much money is at stake. These things cost like millions and millions of dollars. So you can't just like come up with, with a stupid idea off the top of your head, like you can in TV and like, it's on the air a few months later after everyone <laughs> like um, works over time to get it on air. But but yeah, features, you can really hone things, but there's that limitation, like creatively, it's you're honing and sculpting and not just like coming up with crazy things um, and like laughing and putting them in and then it stays forever. It's like, 
a very like controlled planned thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And that was a big thing to get used to. Like TV shows, you could just do, you know, really whatever you want. And like, yeah. And for Flapjack, our budget was like 50 cents. So they didn't care. They could say, just do whatever you want. Um, And you could really like have such a niche audience and, you know, try stuff. And for, you know, first job to be able to try out all kinds of crazy, (laughs) crazy things that no one else would do is uh, amazing. You know, some of it worked, some of it didn't work, but that we had the freedom to just try stuff was amazing. So then did you find it kind of limiting working, you know, having so many people depending upon choices that you're making and... Um, and a whole studio with a big budget and a marketing team to kind of check in with, was it limiting? Um, it felt limiting at first. At first it felt like, you know, you'd come up with a joke and you'd think it was so funny and everyone would laugh. And then you'd like put it in the movie and execs would say like, whoa, what is this joke? Explain this joke. Oh, it's, we, we thought it was really funny. It's funny. Um, yeah. and it would be like, um, well, where have, has someone done this joke before? Oh, nobody. That's why it's a farther. That's why it's a joke. But it was like, you, you need to know what type of joke this is and like why it will work. But, but once, uh, once you start testing um, and audiences laugh and you start getting good numbers, then, then it, everything changed. And it was just like, okay, we trust your weird sensibilities oh, for, the yeah. mo- for the most part. In, in a weird way, it's almost uh, good training to be able to justify your choices and be able to explain why, why things work. Yeah, totally. And, and I, I mean, I love it now. I, uh, I, I have a TV show that I've been wanting to make, but I'm, I'm so in love with being able to work uh, at Sony specifically. Um, Christine mm-hmm. Belson, um, the head of Sony animation is amazing and like, sees the value in making original content which is huge and something you know most of us animation directors never thought we'd get to do um because it's so easy for a studio just to buy a property and pump some money into it and make it it's cool to be able to have someone who's smart enough and has good enough instincts to take a risk on like brand new things that no one has seen before do you feel (laughs) like we're in a golden age of animation or particularly uh, shiny, metallic. I don't know if it's gold. Is it silver? <laughs> is it uh, bronze? Um, do you feel yeah. like a good time to be in this industry? Yeah, I mean, it, it's amazing. Best time since uh, I've gotten into it. Just between streaming services and the pandemic, and the only things that the, <laughs> the studios could make were animated. I mean, there's such an amazing array of such different stuff. Uh, Inside job that just came out from Shion is amazing adult stuff. Um, uh, uh, all of the stuff that, you know, the, the super adult, like Rick and Morty stuff is so good. The really heartfelt um, stuff, this uh, Amphibi, Amphibaland, Amphibia. I, uh, mm-hmm. um, it used to be Amphibaland. Uh, I, I did the voice of the main character for a second. Um, uh, it's so amazing and sincere and uh, Owl House, so good. There's just so many good things on. It's amazing. And everyone's just, you know, making it um, really personal, which is all the best stuff. Yeah. Um, so, you know, obviously Gravity Falls and Adventure Time, you and the creators of the show have a shared history. But for shows like Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, um, who you voiced Todd, how did uh, that come about? Do you have like a VO agent? Do you uh, audition? Or is it more like somebody's like, oh, little Gideon, let's put him in. How does that work? Um, <laughs> I do have a voiceover agent, but they stop sending me stuff because I never do auditions. But, uh, uh, but I, I what's do, that uh, like? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's hard. That is a hard job. Um, uh, going to auditions all the time. I did it for a minute, and I was just like, nope. This is, <laughs> this makes me too feel too bad about myself. Um, but because uh, <laughs> I don't get them like you do. I I only get them when it's like my friends. Uh, so uh, Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, I knew Ant Ward from CalArts and Andy Suriano I'd worked with. So um, I don't know. They just were nice enough to cast me, I guess. <laughs> they, 
um, uh, they needed a, a creepy, nice person, and they thought, Thorup. <laughs> <laughs> Typecast again. <laughs> That's great. This next question is a little ADD, but since it came up and you were mentioning that, um, do you feel like you have ADD? Is that like a, is that just more like a personality type? Cause I also was like diagnosed with ADD as a kid, but like not really, they didn't really know what it was. It was ADD, ADD, not ADHD. Yeah, now it's ADHD. They it was like it. not really, they're like, it's not really a thing in girls. You know, it's like sort of this. Yeah, you're lucky version. you got diagnosed. I, I had to go to a psychologist, but then it was never, it was never treated or anything. It would have probably been useful to have some tools to deal with that. But as there's been such a push for, towards neurodiversity and um, so much more awareness around uh, different learning skit types and everything, I was wondering, do you think ADD and ADHD could actually be a good thing? Um, yeah, totally. It's like a superpower. Um, so yes, I have ADHD. I got diagnosed when I was a kid and my mom was like, do you want to take medications or anything? And I was like, no, go to a doctor. No way. Um, so I didn't. Um, but, uh, my sister who's, I'm 45. My sister's a couple years younger than me. She just got diagnosed with ADHD for the first time. And it's just like, it's been mind like life changing for her. Um, to know what was going on and be able to take um, Adderall, like just a tiny, tiny bit of uh, amount has like fixed all the things that she's been like trying to rein in. I, I, I didn't, um, I, I have taken a few Adderalls. It's just, I think my brain has rewired like how to navigate the world. Um, and they've found, I, I think most people in animation probably have ADHD. It forces you to think more creatively. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people in voice acting have ADHD because it's like, you can come up with stuff like a thousand times faster than most people because you know that's how you navigate the world. You have to think of creative ways and you have to be engaged. So you have to find ways to make yourself engaged. And that's like so valuable. I, I like to be able to have a job like ours, like for voice acting, you have to come up with things super quick on the spot and the things you got in trouble for in school, just like blurting out something funny, like suddenly you're getting paid for it and no one else can do it. Um, <laughs> and directing a movie like, or, or TV show, like you're like never sitting down at a desk, which is awesome <laughs> when you have ADHD, but it's like, you're talking to these people and like quickly trying to figure out like, oh, what if we did this and this and this? Oh, here's an idea. Oh, I don't know if it's quite the right idea, but blah, 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 blah. And then you go to the next place and like, like you're just moving around, like be, having ADHD. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Like, people are laughing and like you come up with ideas like together, um, but it like enables people to like brainstorm. And yeah, what most of, of the people you're working with having ADHD, it's like all of the um, class clowns on the back of the class got to sit together and come up with their own curriculum and it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's really, it, it's, um, it's amazing how, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> oh, oh my God. All right, it's, <laughs> it's amazing how this industry and like what we create and creativity in general it's almost like with neurodivergency that maybe these things are superpowers and even something like autism being able to be hyper focused on a particular um industry or a particular area of focus is just it's really inspiring if we can maybe look at it from all the positives that it brings us and and yes um at times if it's standing in the way of what we're trying to accomplish treated as needed but um it's so cool so many people on the feed were uh also chiming in with their um add and stuff so yeah there's um uh some of the best storyboard artists i've seen are pe kids because they're younger than me but people with autism um uh it absolutely is a superpower and you know there's um minus sides to everything but um the pluses are gigantor 
Gigantor, Gigantor. <laughs> um, I want to save a couple minutes at the end for um, audience questions. And if anybody has a question for Thurup, I've written down the few that were submitted in, in um, advance. We're not going to have time to get to all of them. I'm sorry. We just, um, we only have an hour. But um, if you do have questions, throw them in the box and we'll try to pick, um, pick ones that um, seem engaging. I did. <laughs> I did. Somebody was asking uh, about uh, breaking your leg at Mormon camp. <laughs> I think that didn't come from my research. Uh, um, I, I'm not going to tell that story. It wasn't okay. Mormon camp, though. It was uh, when you're 19 and you're Mormon, you, you have to go on a mission. Um, I mean, they say you choose to, but you don't really choose to. Um, and uh, I was in Paraguay and... <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll save that story for another time. <laughs> we'll have back uh, in the next incarnation. And then <laughs> I also, I see you've been kind of like building this amazing house and you've been posting some pictures on your Instagram. Can you tell us a little bit about that and that pro process? Um, sure. Um, uh, so uh, my aesthetic is Middle Earth modern. <laughs> <laughs> um, that in and of uh, itself sounds a little ADD. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is. Uh, I don't know. I love, I love making things. Um, I've always loved it. Um, uh, I grew up in the woods in Florida and love exploring the woods. I love like incorporating design and like really wabi-sabi natural uh, design sensibilities, things that look worn and weathered and like a medieval farmer made them uh, that's what I enjoy making <laughs> and and that's what I enjoy using and it's um I don't know to like make knives that you use every day to make dinner and breakfast is like feel so good or to drink out of a glass that you blew um I don't know it feels it feels <laughs> it feels good it feels like I can do anything yeah <laughs> I made this so how do you know. balance your time then creatively? Because I feel also the same. It's like, there's so many things like I want to learn how to like, like draw. <laughs> like I want to learn like digital painting. And like, I just, ah, uh, there's so many things I feel like the older I get, the more, um, the more I have to make tough decisions on how, what I create and how I spend my time. But cause creativity kind of needs space for the magic to happen. And I feel like you have so much magic in your life and you are so creative. Do you ever find it um, challenging to decide where to put your focus? Um, uh, uh, no, I think having, <laughs> Having lived with ADHD for 45 years, um, I, I guess I know my patterns and it, it does get tricky because like I do want to, I want to do everything. I want to make, no, I want to be able to make anything and, and it's tricky and it's expensive to like <laughs> buy the glass blowing forge um, or, you know, setting up a blacksmith shop was you know, not, not free um, and woodworking and stuff. But I, I think like I found like, oh, I can go rent space at a glass blowing place and, and try it out. And if, and if I want to do it all the time, um, then I'll go down that road. But I, I don't force myself to like, I feel like I should create it. I feel like I should learn how to do this thing. It's either like, I'm, I'm either so consumed that I just have to do it. So I just find myself doing it um, until <laughs> Uh, until I, you know, have to come in for dinner to tuck the kids in or to do my work. But, you know, I don't, I, I feel compelled to do all those things. It's not like I feel like I should do them. I just can't help it. Do you ever feel um, you don't have enough time to do them all? Um, I don't know. Time, time management. So I, like, I, I've learned if I don't get like really far on something where I'm like so excited about it within like the first day of doing it. I know like I'm not going to do a two month project where I'm working a little bit on it every day. That's, <laughs> it's just not in my wheelhouse. So I've found like my aesthetic of like really rustic medieval farm stuff 
Um, I, I can make them fast. Um, I can make things fast or make a part fast. And so I'll just do that as quick as I can. And then ADHD will kick in and I'll do 40 more things and then I'll circle back and I'll finish it later. Or if I don't circle back and finish it, like, all right, knitting is not my thing. I don't, I wish that I could knit. I wish that I could crochet. Um, I don't feel compelled to do it. So, and I, I just won't, I won't sit and um, knit and stitch um, regardless of, of my want. So <laughs> that's out. That's in the it's no, do, um, no do pile. Okay. <laughs> um, can you tell us a little bit about what you're working on now or is it under wraps? I mean, you mentioned you're working for Sony. Um, yeah, I'm writing uh, and directing a, a movie at Sony. Um, it's an original. I can't talk about it. Um, but I'm excited about it. <laughs> but it's going to be awesome. <laughs> okay, well, then let's go. I, a lot of people in the audience questions. Um, the first question that was asked is, is there going to be an Angry Birds 3? Do we know anything? Uh, there, there, I, I'm going to get myself in trouble. There okay. is sometimes talk of it. We'll see what happens. <laughs> That's very general. I think that you are off the hook. Um, what about, okay, well, who's your favorite character you've ever voiced? Do you have a favorite? Who, if so, who is it? Oh, for sure, Flapjack, because it's yeah. me. He's my baby. Um, but I'm really proud of uh, little Gideon, and I'm uh, very grateful that uh, Alex Hirsch let me do his voice. It was so fun to do a bad guy, um, especially, especially a bad guy from the South. Uh, now, this is normally the point where I'd be like, do you feel like doing the voice? But I don't want to uh, embarrass you. But do you um, in the way? Uh, I've been embarrassing myself all my life. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Mabel, my little marshmallow. I'm the king of all I survey. That's it. That's, that's a little game. <laughs> Thank you. Um, geez, some, somebody really cute wants to know what happened to Black Forest. I don't know what that means. Oh, so Black Forest was a thing I uh, posted stuff about. Um, so uh, after I left Cartoon Network, I developed Black Forest um, and pitched it around a little bit. I developed it as a movie um, without really knowing the movie world. I, I redeveloped it as a show called North Woods. Um, that I developed uh, at Disney and I own it and I've had offers to make it um, and I'm s slowly working on it in my spare time. <laughs> um, so it's like um, if I get fired from somewhere then I'll, <laughs> I'll make Northwoods. Like in between um, the Hobbit door and blowing glass you're like yeah I'm writing it and I'm writing it as a movie and then a series afterwards so um I'll be prepared with both, but it's, it's like something that I just naturally fall into doing because I love it and I'm proud of it. So uh, I'm, I'm very excited about doing it, but I also don't want to like quickly make it somewhere because it's my only option. I want it to be a gem. So, um, buy it in my time, but I am working on it. And thank you. Thank you for being interested. I'm very excited about it also. Um, so um, we didn't quite dig into this question, which is how did you get the role to play Little Gideon on Gravity Falls? And what did you think about playing the character? Um, was it sort of more of the same, they just invited you or? Um, yeah, Alex Hirsch was, um, uh, did storyboards on Flapjack and um, he went Disney, got his show and I think I think he wanted someone that can sing. He was probably disappointed in my singing, but I sang all the time on Flapjack, um, just like in the hallways and at my desk and at everyone else's desk. And I think he wanted like a little musical televangelist. <laughs> um, oh, thanks, Allison. Um, different Allison with weird spelling. <laughs> hey, girl. <laughs> other Allison with other weird spelling. Um, What's up, sister? Um, uh, I totally forgot what I was saying. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. I know we're, we're, um. Oh yeah. L Lil Gideon. Um, so yeah. Uh, Alex Hirsch was like, Herb's a little weirdo. You will do great at this job. <laughs> and you did. 
Uh, I know it's so exciting for me to go from like super innocent flapjack to little little bad, evil bad guy. It was like, <laughs> yeah, crazy, crazy gratifying. Oh, we didn't really talk about home adventures with Tip and O and um, Infinity Studios asked, did you enjoy the show? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, did you enjoy it? The movie, I guess, before working on the show? Um, yeah, we started working on the show before the movie was out. So, um, oh. so they had me and Ryan Kriego, uh, who I developed it with. Uh, he was on the show a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't watch it. I'll go back and watch it. Um, uh, yeah, they had us give notes on the movie and stuff. So we were seeing it uh, as it went, um, which is cool. Amazing. Um, let's see. We just got a couple more minutes before we wrap it up, guys. Um, do you know if Flapjack is ever going to come to DVD? I don't think anything will ever come to DVD. <laughs> Are DVDs like done? Do people buy DVDs? That's uh, right. Yeah, but I'm for sorry. the collector. Pro probably people love them. I, I you would. have not have a, had a DVD player in 15 years, so I don't know. Maybe they'll make records, um, phonograph records. So we taught, we did um, go over a lot of these great questions. Um, and this is a really fun one because I know originally we were going to do this at four o'clock because you have rock climbing, um, but we, we were able to get it in. So what do you enjoy about rock climbing? Can you talk a little bit about that hobby? Yay. Hey, Camille. Um, uh, I think, yes, yeah, so um, as I mentioned, my um, personality and habits lead me into like scary situations that I don't know if I can get out of and it's I'm drawn to it. It's like part of my personality and it's like rock climbing is a safe-ish way to do that where I can get myself into like terror, terror mode and not know how I'm going to get out and then get out like a bunch of times at, uh, per climbing session. <laughs> so um, it's like the the terror and then accomplishing a thing is like the best feeling in the world. So um, I, I love it. It's very healthy, is, healthy outlet. Is rock climbing like just, cause like we'll go hiking and then end up like rock climbing rocks. Is that rock climbing or is rock climbing like you need the gear, you need to be like, doing knots it, like can I tell can I say like the other day I was like I went on a hike but we ended up it was a stream and it was empty and so we we're like climbing these crazy rocks and then I was like I went rock climbing <laughs> and I was like you well, went scrambling I went scrambling you scrambled um, unless you're a maniac and you climbed like crazy stuff <laughs> it was pretty crazy but, but... <laughs> I don't know um, what's your definition of ma your definition of maniac <laughs> might be a little different <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, as a teenager, that's what I, I did, stupid, stupid stuff. Like, if Alex Honnold couldn't really climb and climb the stuff that he did, that's what I was trying to do as a uh, teenager. But, um, yeah, now I do it safe with ropes and stuff. Fun. Is there somewhere in L.A. that you go? Is that, do you go to Joshua Tree or are you going here? Um, I, I love Joshua Tree. Um, so I live in Ventura, Um so instead of my commute to LA every day, I, <laughs> for three hours, I get to go uh, hiking with my dogs in the morning and then I go rock climbing at night at the gym. Um, and there's also like great outdoor places um, around Ventura and LA and everything. But uh, uh, there's Boulder Dash is the climbing gym in Ventura that is delightful and it's like, um, uh, don't, don't come out here guys, but every, <laughs> everyone's really nice. And it's like <laughs> you know, the, the only social interaction that I get, um, uh, during pandemic time. So it's been, I don't know. It's like my family over there. Yeah. Well, we're um, at seven o'clock. Um, this has been one of my most fun interviews, getting to know you better and, I just feel like you're such a kindred spirit and um, I feel like I could chat with you forever, but I want to be super respectful of your time. So um, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah. Thank you so much, Allison. It was super fun. It's uh, been great. Anytime if there's anything you want to come back and chat about, um, we have some, we're going to be shifting it up 
going off Instagram and then um, becoming more like a real regular podcast um, woo -woo. in a studio, hopefully in 2022. So cool. Woo -woo. Let's go real rock climbing outside. Yeah, that sounds amazing. That would be really fun. Uh, we should do it. Yeah, we have a little travel trailer. So we're always in Ventura, Santa Barbara County and the Las Padres National Forest. So fun. Woo woo. Everybody says thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This was Yay, great. Thanks so much, guys. Okay. Have a wonderful day. And if anybody wants, I'm going to go over to TikTok. I, I know you guys have been asking for a couple weeks. I'm going to go live and we can hang out there and do a recap. So we'll see you over there if anybody wants to join me. Okay, guys. Woo -woo. Talk soon. Bye. Thanks, thanks Allison. Yeah.